as Helen and I uh, prepared to move shortly to other pastures, my mind is cast back over many experiences in this place shared. And as you, Heather, and you, Kim, were bringing us music there today, I was um, transported yet again by the many colours of your music making and I'm thankful for the, the grace that you have brought to me and others through your, your music, uh, which has invaded our spirits and enlarged our souls and perspective, and, and thank you very much for that. Thank you. I remember, was it six or seven Christmas Eves ago, when uh, I was uh, I was in the step here and was offering blessings to people who came. And out of the darkness appeared a vision in white. I thought, it's an angel, it's Christmas Eve. <laughs> but it was, it was Stephanie. <laughs> we met there for the first time that night, and I'm so glad, Stephanie, that we did. Uh, you had been ministering to me in ways you hadn't realized beforehand in what I had read and heard of you on the ABC radio, principally, and read in other places. And you have continued to, to do that for me and for others, and I am eternally grateful for that. Thank you. A long way east of Istanbul, well on the Asian side of the Bosphorus, in Kurdish country, between Euphrates and Tigris rivers, an area which had only just been opened up again to outsiders when we visited, after a long period of dispute. Our small party received generous, and sometimes embarrassingly generous, hospitality from Islamic people in whose homes we shared fellowship. I knew that hospitality is a very high value in Islam, but I didn't know how costly it is until sitting in the public spaces of people's homes, which range from a very large reception space of a furniture businessman in his home to the crabbed kitchen come dining room come lounge room of a quite poor couple and their only child. We received countless gifts. An elaborate tea set which sits in pride of place in our home. A fabulously exquisite book which uh, sits on our coffee table. Along with the rich experiences of our personal encounters one man gave me his uh, takia. This is uh, a prayer cap used by many Islam uh, Islamic men as they pray. Uh, often at the Jum'ah, Friday prayer at mosque, or the Salat, their prayers at home. For men it is mustaha, which means commendable. It's not required. It's commendable. It means also seeking the love of God. And it's intended to be covering the head during prayer. I use it on cooler Sunday mornings at my home office desk during my final preparations for preaching and leading worship. This morning was its first outing for the year. We received a, a number of prayer mats between us, beautifully woven, sometimes by hand, including this prayer mat here, which for me is not only beautiful, but has a very precious story. We were sitting in that cramped kitchen come dining room come lounge room that I spoke of earlier of the poor couple. There was barely space to breathe between the wall and the dining table 
in the part of the room I sat. In fact, it was like a concertina room, you know. Uh, they had to move the, the, the table away so I could sit down and then move it back uh, so that other people could sit down. It was about as intimate as you could get, in fact, without making love with each other. But it wasn't that kind of party. As the woman of the house prepared enough dinner for four times the number of us who were present, we heard tell the wonderful story of her husband's Hajj pilgrimage. We had seen the picture painted proudly on the wall on the street outside next to the front door, so we knew that somebody in this household had been a Haji. Yes, it was a high spiritual moment in his journey. Yes, it was heightened by the crowds, the teeming multicultural humanity who prayed there. You've seen the pictures, haven't you, Baha'u'llah? Millions of people in the space of one camera lens. It was the highlight of his whole family's lives. Though he was the only one who made harsh. Over coffee in the concertina lounge room, gifts were exchanged. And he gave me this prayer mat. Now it is beautiful and I love Burgundy. Something about Burgundy gets hold of me. And as the translator conveyed the giver's sentiments to me, I learned that this prayer mat, this very prayer mat, had been had accompanied him as he made his hajj. And he had rubbed it against the Kaaba, which is that black draped building many of you will have seen at the center of uh, the hajj. If you are Islamic and in Saudi Arabia, then it's towards the Kaaba that you face when you pray. When you are in other parts of the world, it's towards Mecca that you pray because the Kaaba is there. My own geography of faith is shaped mainly by features north and west of Mecca. But as he handed this prayer mat to me, we exchanged a sacrament which transcended time and space and religious practice. It was one of those, time, those times that got me thinking. No religion has a monopoly on the sense of the holy. No religion has a monopoly on the sense of the holy. Which is why I have so cherished this community of Sydney interfaith and the leading of Stephanie, which is soaked in the prayers and meditations and reflections and the wisdoms of religious traditions around the globe. As I prepare to move to another ministry, thank you, Stephanie, for the spirituality which you have shaped for me and for others here in our service together. And thank you all for the gifts of your companionship on this journey that we share together.